Calculus 1, video lecture number 17 on related rates. Now, many things will change with time. Think about it when you're talking about how quickly you're driving, right? That's the rate of change of your distance with respect to time. And it's common for rates of change to be interrelated. So, for example, if you're pumping water into a tank, the rate at which the volume of the water in the tank increases is closely related to the rate at which the depth of the water in the tank increases. So our goal in these problems is to find the rate at which some quantity is changing by relating it to other quantities whose rates of change are more easily measured or they're given to us. Okay, so here's the strategy. Just read the problem carefully. Draw a diagram whenever possible. You need to introduce notation. So you want to represent whatever rates of change are given to you using the appropriate derivatives, label things, etc. And that's, yeah, I went into step four. Express the rates in terms of derivatives. You're going to write an equation relating all of the variables that are players in the problem. Okay, relating the variables to each other. And it's going to be either some known equation or something that you're going to have to observe from the scenario described. And then you always will differentiate both sides with respect to t using implicit differentiation or the chain rule. These are related rate problems. So every single one, you're going to differentiate both sides of that equation that you got in step five with respect to t. And last thing, you're going to solve for the unknown rate. Okay, so we'll start off nice and breezy and then we'll build some of the complexity of the problem, they can get pretty exciting. So first example, the length of a rectangle is increasing at a rate of eight centimeters per second, and its width is increasing at a rate of three centimeters per second. When the length is 20 centimeters and the width is 10 centimeters, how fast is the area increasing? Okay, so we're talking about a rectangle, let's draw one. And I noticed three quantities that they're talking about. They're talking about the length of the rectangle, they're talking about the width of the rectangle, and then they also want us to do something with the area of the rectangle. Okay, so here's the length, here's the width. Area is a two-dimensional quantity, right? All that good stuff inside. So let's see here. The length of a rectangle is increasing at a rate of eight centimeters per second. So that means the rate of change of the length of the rectangle, so dl dt is equal to eight centimeters per second. Notice the units can help you. It's dl, right, length is changing, and notice the units here in the numerator are centimeters. That's a one-dimensional quantity that measures length. All of the related rate problems will have dt in them because you're looking at the rate of change with respect to time always. And notice we have seconds in the denominator. So dl dt is equal to eight centimeters per second. Okay, I also noticed that they said the width is increasing at a rate of three centimeters per second. So how would you write that as a derivative? Good, that means dw dt equals three centimeters per second. Okay, then here's what they're asking. They're saying when the length is 20 centimeters and the width is 10 centimeters, how fast is the area decreasing? So how would you write that as a derivative? The rate of change of the area. And I think I said decreasing, it should be increasing. What they want is dA dt. They want the rate of change of the area with respect to time. Whenever they give you this specific info, you save it for the end. Do not plug it in just yet, okay? Good, so they want dA dt. They gave me dL dt and dW dt. So now let's see, can we think of an equation that relates these three variables? What are the three variables? A, L, and w. Can you think of an, of an equation that relates the length and the width and the area of a rectangle? I hope so. It's area equals length times width. And now I'm going to differentiate 
this equation both sides with respect to t. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t of both sides, okay? Now, the left side is just going to become dA dt. And then notice on the right-hand side, I have to use the product rule because both L and W are changing. They're both variables. So let's leave L alone. Derivative of W is going to be dW dt plus, and then dL dt times, now leave W alone. Okay, now I get to plug in the specific info. 20 centimeters for L, 10 centimeters for W, and then I'll plug in their respective rates of change. So then we have dA dt is equal to, okay, L specifically, they told me they wanted it when L is 20 centimeters. dW dt, they gave me that, that's three centimeters per second. Plus dL dt, that was given, that's eight centimeters per second. And the W that I'm going to use is 10. So this is 60 plus 80, which is 140. And then make sure you get the units right. So this rate of change is for dA dt. So A is in the numerator. Area is being measured in centimeters squared. And then dt, that's per second. So you have to have the units right for the problem to be correct. OK, good. Let's look at some more examples. You look at the hang of it slowly, slowly. So if x squared plus y squared equals 25 and dy dt is a mystery. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'll tell you right now. dy dt is equal to 6, okay? Find dx dt when y equals 4. Okay, well, in this case, we don't really have to do too much setup because they already gave us the equation. It involves only x's and y's. I have dy dt and I need to find dx dt. So we can just go ahead, differentiate both sides with respect to t. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t of x squared plus y squared. And that's going to equal the derivative with respect to t of 25. All right, so on the left-hand side, derivative of x squared, that's going to be 2x times, by the chain rule, dx dt, plus derivative of y squared is going to be 2y times dy dt. And this is equal to the derivative of 25, but that's just a constant, so that's going to be 0. Okay, now I'm trying to solve for dx dt. Okay, notice I can cancel out these twos here if I divide everything by two. And so dx dt is gonna equal, let me move over negative y times dy dt to the other side, and then divide by x. Okay, so now I'm gonna start substituting in everything they gave us. They told me dy dt is six. Okay, so that'll go there. They told me y is 4. Oh, but they didn't tell me what x is, so hold on, we got to get x. Where am I going to get x from? The original equation. Remember, x squared plus y squared is 25. So in this case, x squared plus, now I need x when y is 4. So I'm going to plug in 4 for y equals 25. That means x squared equals 25 minus 16, which is 9. So x equals plus or minus 3. Oh, so we're going to have two possible answers here. Okay. Okay, okay. So if x equals positive 3, then dx dt is going to equal, let's see, negative y. So that's going to be negative 4 times dy dt, which is 6, over positive 3. So that's going to give me negative 8, good. And then similarly, if x is equal to negative 3, then dx dt is equal to negative 4 times 6 over negative 3, which is positive 8. And there's no units on this one because they didn't give me any. So don't sweat it, okay? Sometimes they might say, 
um, units per second, units per minute, but nothing was given. So you don't have to worry in this instance. Okay, how was that one? Now let's do something a little more interesting. So at noon, ship A is 150 kilometers west of ship B. Ship A is sailing east at 35 kilometers per hour and ship B is sailing north at 25 kilometers per hour. How fast is the distance between the ships changing at 4 p.m.? Okay, so I'm gonna draw everything that's going on at noon in blue. Okay, so this is what's happening at noon. Ship A is here and it is 150 kilometers west of ship B. Okay, so this distance here is 150 kilometers. This whole distance. And then here's ship A. Oh yes, and here's ship B. Okay, now ship A is sailing east at 35 kilometers per hour. So ship A is going this away at 35 kilometers per hour. And ship B is sailing north. Oh, so ship B is going this away at 25 kilometers per hour. How fast is the distance between the ships changing at 4 p.m.? So now at 4 p.m., I'll draw everything in a different color. So at 4 p.m., I don't know exactly. Let's all put, well, I could figure out exactly. Ship A is here. Ship B is here. And I want to know how fast this distance between them is changing. Okay. Well, let's zoom in on this triangle here because that's going to be the crux of the problem how we're going to solve it. So here's ship A, here's ship B. Notice we have a right triangle and I want to know what the rate of change of the distance between them is. I'm going to call this distance X, this distance Y, and this distance Z. Okay? So what I want or what I need to find is DZ, DT right, how fast the distance between them is changing at specifically 4 p.m. Okay, very good. Now, let's see, let's translate what rates of change they gave us so far. Um, they told me ship A is sailing east at 35 kilometers per hour. So that means if ship A is sailing east, this distance X is decreasing. Can you tell that? Because it's gonna keep going this way. So whatever X is, it's gonna be shrinking. So that means dx dt is actually equal to negative 35 kilometers per hour. Because X is decreasing. Ship A is moving in a way that it's getting closer to where ship B used to be. dy dt, that's dependent on ship B moving, right? Because this distance here is Y, this distance here is X. DY, DT, that's just increasing. That one is 25 kilometers per hour. Okay, and so now we need DZ, DT. Okay, do you see a relationship between X, Y, and Z? Right, X, Y, and Z. What's the relationship? Well, we have a right triangle, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So I know that x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. They're all changing. So now let's differentiate both sides with respect to t. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t of x squared plus y squared and also derivative with respect to t of the right-hand side. So derivative of x squared, that's going to be 2x times dx dt plus derivative of y squared is 2y times dy dt. And then derivative of z squared, that's going to be 2z times dz dt. Notice, again, I can cancel out all those 2s, divide throughout. And so what are we left with? x times 
dx dt plus y times dy dt equals z times dz dt. Okay, so let's see, what did they give us? They gave me dx dt and dy dt. So I have this quantity, I have this quantity. I'm trying to find dz dt, so I don't expect to have that one, but I'm still missing x, y, and z. So I need to find x, y, and z before I can finish the problem. So let's do it. So let's find x, y, and z specifically at 4 p.m., correct? Okay, well, ship A travels at 35 kilometers per hour. So it has traveled 35 times four, which would be 140 kilometers. So let's go back up to the picture here. Remember, this entire distance here from A to B is 150 kilometers. And since ship A is traveling 35 kilometers per hour, in four hours, it's gone 140 kilometers. So what's X going to be? What's left over? It's just gonna be 150 minus 140. So X is equal to 10 kilometers. So X is 150 minus 140, which is 10 kilometers. Now, what about ship B? Ship B is traveling north and it has traveled for four hours also. So 25 times four, which is 100 kilometers. Now, let's see, is that exactly what Y is gonna be? Yes, right? Whatever ship B travels, that's exactly equal to Y. Okay, so that means Y is equal to 100 kilometers. And then I can get Z. How do I get z? Well, just use the Pythagorean theorem again. So remember, x squared plus y squared equals z squared. So that means z is equal to the square root of 100 squared plus 10 squared. That's going to be 10,100. And then I can simplify that. That's going to be 10 root 101. Okay, so now I'm ready to plug everything in. So remember we had x times dx dt plus y times dy dt equals z times dz dt, right? So let's plug everything in. So x is 10. dx dt, remember, is negative 35 plus y is 100 dy dt is 25, and then that equals 10 rad 101 times dz dt. Okay, we're almost done. So dz dt is going to equal, let's multiply that out. So that's negative 350 plus 2500 over 10 rad 101. So that's going to be in the numerator, 2,150 over 10 rad 101. I can cancel out this 10, and I just have 215 up here. So we have 215 over rad 101. And then if you're asked to give it as a decimal, this is approximately 21.39. Make sure, make sure you include units. So this is dz dt. Z is the distance between them. So it's also being measured in kilometers. And then t for this problem was hours. Okay, so just make sure you're really precise with the units and they'll help you. They'll help you when you're given a rate of change for you to interpret what it is. All right, last example says, a trough is 10 feet long and its ends have the shape of isosceles triangles that are th three feet across at the top and have a height of one foot. If the trough is being filled with water at a rate of 12 feet cube per minute, how fast is the water level rising when the water is six inches deep? All right, let's start off, let's draw a trough. So the ends are isosceles triangles. So there's a triangle. I'm just going to copy it 
and then paste another one here and then connect them to make the trough. If you're not too familiar with the trough, the only reference I know is when I would watch Charlotte's Web when I was younger and the little pigs would drink out of it. Okay, and they're telling us the ends are um, isosceles triangles. So we know that these two sides are congruent. It's three feet across on the top. Okay, so this distance here is three feet across and one foot high. And the trough is 10 feet long. So from one end to the other is 10 feet. Okay, water is being filled into the trough. So we're pouring water in. And it says it's being filled at a rate of 12 feet cubed per minute. Now look, the units are going to be really helpful. Feet cubed? Well, that's measuring volume, right? So this is representing dV dt. That's the rate of change of the volume of the water with respect to time. So the units are actually essential in helping you interpret the information. Now they're asking how fast is the water level rising when the water is six inches deep? So what we're gonna do is let H represent the height of the water or the water level. So basically down here at the bottom, we would have H equals zero. And then all the way at the top, H would equal one. And so somewhere along the way is whatever the water level is at. So they wanna know how fast is the water level rising? So as a derivative, what we wanna find is dH dt it says when the water is six inches deep. So that's when the height is six inches, but be so, so careful because everything's being measured in feet. So this is half a foot. Okay, good. So that's what we're working with. Now let's see here, I need a, an equation to relate the variables that are changing. And notice we are working with volume and height. So how could I find the volume of the water in the trough? Well, to get the volume, pretty much the general rule is you take the area of the base region times the height. And it might be a little hard to imagine doing that with a trough unless you turn it and rotate it on its side. So imagine, here's the trough, I'm gonna turn it. And say I stand it up on that triangular portion here. Say I stand it up right there. Then that's the base region. And then the height is always just gonna be 10 across. If you take a slice, right? Say the water gets filled up to here. The base would be that little tiny triangle there and then the height's gonna be 10. That's always filled up all the way. Or if you fill the water to there, then the base would be the area of that triangle times 10. Okay, let's see if I can rotate it back. Poor little triangle. Trough, will you move back for me? Yay, okay, good. So the volume of water in the trough is equal to the area of that triangle. So, you know, however much water is filled in the area of that little green triangle times 10. All right, well, how do you get the area of that little green triangle? Hmm, let's draw it over here. Well, this would be the height of the water, and then this is the base of the triangle. So that would be 1 half base times height times 10. So volume is equal to 1 half times 10, that's 5 base times height, where B is the base of that triangle. Okay, are we ready to take derivatives now with respect to time? What do you think? No, we have a problem. <laughs> Look, they gave us dV dt, okay. And they want dH dt, all right, all right. But I have no information about B. 
And B is changing, right? As the water level goes up, imagine, say the water was up to here. Now the height is different. The height of the triangle is here and the base has gotten bigger as well. So B changes with respect to time. So what do we do? What do we do? Well, we gotta get rid of that variable. I need to basically express it in terms of H. So we need to express B in terms of H because both B and H change as the water level rises. Okay, how can we do that? Well, we're gonna use similar triangles. And this is something you're gonna need to do in related rates problems anytime you have too many variables that are changing. So what do you do? Well, you say, all right, I've got this little triangle here. And then I know all the way at the top, if the water was full, if the trough was totally full, this height here is one foot. And across the top here is three feet for the base. So these triangles, since they're similar triangles, they're in proportion, meaning their ratio is constant. So three over one, the ratio of the base to the height of the larger triangle would be equal to B over H. And that means I can just cross multiply 3H is equal to B. Hooray! So now I can put that back into the volume formula. So volume, which is equal to 5B times H, is actually equal to 5 times 3H times H. So now I have V of H equals 15H squared. Woo! All right, now let's differentiate with respect to time. So DV dt is equal to derivative of 15h squared, that's going to be 30h times dh dt. And then they gave me dv dt in the beginning. Do you remember? It was 12 equals 30. They said when the height is 6 inches, which we said is the same as half a foot, times dh dt. And then now we're pretty much done. So dh dt is equal to 12 divided by, well, 30 times a half, that's 15, right? So 12 divided by 15. And then that we can reduce, divide by 3, and you get 4 fifths. And then check your units. So since this is dh dt, h is measured in feet and t is measured in time. So four-fifths of a foot per minute. And that concludes the lessons. I hope you enjoyed related rates. They take some practice for sure. And don't forget you're going to need to use similar triangles for other sorts of um, related rate problems. A classic one that comes up is when you have a cone and you're either emptying it or filling it with water or sand is being poured into a conical pile. So just keep in mind when you're dealing with a cone as well that the height here and the radius will both change as the volume increases, but you can just use similar triangles to help you out like we did here, okay? Just a little sneak preview. So don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps support the channel. And stay tuned, we've got hyperbolic functions coming up. Ooh.